Welcome back everyone to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. In this video, we will continue building our chat application and talk specifically about session management using a Flask extension called Flask Login. So far in this project, we have built a registration and login functionality. We have improved the security by using password-based key derivation functions and storing only the hashed value of the password in the database. We added a login functionality in one of the previous videos. Think about this for a second. So we should also have a logout functionality, right? But logout from where? So far, all our login functionality does is verify that the username and password entered by the user matches the records we have in our database. And then we show the user a confirmation screen. We haven't stored anything anywhere which says that the user has logged in. Clearly, before we can log a user off, step one would be to store somewhere the fact that the user is logged in. Storing the login information would also help us prevent access to certain pages of our website which we want restricted to only the logged in users. So how do we do this? Flask has an easy way to manage this through sessions. With sessions, you can store bits of non-sensitive data about the user in form of a cookie. We can write code to have Flask manage sessions directly. Another method to do this is to use a Flask extension called Flask Login, which will abstract away some of the implementation details of session management. So things like store active users ID in the session and let them log in and log out easily, restrict views to logged in users, remember me functionality, etc. Using and configuring this is pretty easy. Let's see how this is done. First, let's install Flask Login extension. Like we did in the previous videos, we will use pip to install. The syntax is pip install flask login. Okay, that's done. Let's go to our application file. To use flask login, we need to import a class called login manager. And we initialize it. There is no magic to how we do this. We have to read the Flask login documentation page to figure out how. As per documentation, we pass in the app to the login manager. And we initialize the app. Before we can start logging in and logging off users, we need to tell Flask login what a user is in our application. Can you recollect where we have defined our users? That's right. We defined our users in our SQL Alchemy model. So let's go to the file models.py. This is where we defined our users. As per this model, a user will have an ID, a user will have a username associated with it, and a user will also have a password. By the way, let me just point out that Flask login is not restricted to SQL Alchemy. It just so happens that in our example, we will be using Flask SQL Alchemy since that's how we have written our code so far. In case you don't understand this bit of it, just use the link above to watch part five of the video series where we covered this syntax. Or you could also use the link for Flask SQL Alchemy video from the description below. It's video number five. Okay, coming back to this. To tell Flask login about the user, we need to pass in user mixin as the first parameter. What is user mixin? User Mixin basically tells Flask Login about our user, and it sort of mixes into our class some properties and methods that we can use. If we go back to Flask Login documentation, by adding User Mixin, it automatically adds these properties to our class. You can then check whether a user, for example, is authenticated by just using this property. We can check if the user is active by using this property. We can use getID method to get a user's ID. One thing you should take away from here is that user mixin does not modify our database in any way. It just adds an additional set of properties and a method to the user class, which makes it easier to do session management. Okay, back to our code. Here's a question. In a previous video, we already created this table but now we are adding user mixin to it. So do we need to modify our table or recreate the table again? No, we don't need to do anything. Remember what I mentioned earlier, 
user mixin in no way affects the database at all. All it does is that it adds some additional functionality to the user class we created. So modifying our existing table or creating a new table because we have added user mixin will not make any difference at all. Okay, for user mixin to work, we need to import it. What we have done so far is tell Flask login about our user model. But this is just a model that applies to all users who registered on our website. To log in and log out specific users, we need to load specific users to Flask login. So each time a user logs in, we need to load that user. To do this, we implement a loader function. Let's do that in our main module, application.py. So the user loader function will take in a user ID and then return a user object. The syntax is at login. So this login is basically this one right here. Dot user underscore loader. So we write the function below it. This takes in a user ID and it returns a user object. Given an ID, how do we extract from the database a user object for this specific user? Though we have not worked with user ID so far, however, you might have guessed that this approach would be no different than when we used Flask SQL Alchemy to work with usernames. So something like this, user.query, and then you filter the results by, by the ID column, and you just return the first value. Well, this is not wrong, but there is an easier way to do this. Since retrieving users by their user ID, our primary key, is such a common construct that SQL Alchemy has a shortcut for it. It's get and then the ID. That's it. We don't have to do the whole filter by ID equals ID, etc. Flask login will pass in this ID to get ID as a string. However, for this query to work properly, the ID has to be an integer and not a string. So we convert the ID from a string to an integer. So this is the user object that needs to be returned. To log in a user, we can use the inbuilt login user function and pass in the user object. First, we import login user. Let's load the user using login user function. This is where we allow the user to log in if there were no validation errors. To load the user, that is to log in the user, we need to pass in the user object to the login user function we just imported. And this is how we do it. But how do we get this user object from our database? Simple. User object equals user.query. We filter the results by matching the username value in our database with the username that was submitted in the login form. If you recollect on the previous video on Flask WT forms, the syntax is like this. It seems that we have logged in the user, but how do we know for sure that the user is logged in? Well, Flask login comes in with a variable called current user. Before we can use it, let's import it. This current user is a proxy for the user object. For example, if we want to get the username of the current user, we can do current user dot username. And this will give us the username of the current user. And we can do this for any column in the database. What we want to do is figure out whether the current user is logged in. Well, thanks to user mixin that we added to the class, we can just go current user dot and use the is authenticated method that came with user mixin. So we can put this in a conditional statement, modify the existing text and show a confirmation message. To test this, if the user is not logged in, let's return the text not logged in. Let's save this and let's test it.
I'm in the folder that we created for this application and I have the virtual environment activated. So let's start the application. Okay, there's a typo in models.py file in line two. Let's start the server again. We'll copy this URL. Okay, that's our registration form. Let's register a user quickly. We'll call it user7. Password is test. Let's log in the user. So we see the confirmation message. Next, let's add two more routes. The first one is going to be a protected route, which only a user who is logged in can view. And the other is going to be a log out route. Over here, let's add a route for our chat application page. This page will accept both get and post methods. Let's call this function chat. For now, we'll just return a simple text. There are two ways in which we could prevent users who are not logged in from viewing this page. We could do something like we did earlier. So instead of checking whether the user is authenticated, we can check whether the user is not authenticated and return or redirect the user somewhere else. This approach would also work. There's another way to protect a page. We can use built-in functionality in Flask login called login required. To see how that is done, let's import login required from Flask login. For now, I will comment this out. Now that we have imported login required, we can just use it as a decorator. That's it. That's all we have to do. If a user tries to access this route without logging in, we will see an error message. Let's test this out. But before we can test it, we also need a way to log off users. So let me create a new route and I'll call it logout. And this will accept only get method. To log out a user, we can use another Flask login function called as logout user. And that's it. The user will be logged out. We just need to import this also. Once the user is logged out, let's return a confirmation message. Logged out using Flask login. Let's go to the browser and test this. So I'm going to use in using the same credentials we created earlier. That's user7 and the password is test. I see the logged in confirmation message. Okay, let's visit the chat page and see what happens. Remember, chat was a restricted page. Okay, we see the message that only a logged in user should see. Now let's log out the user by going to the log out page. It shows us the confirmation message that the user has been logged out. Now that the user is logged out, let's go back and see if we can see the contents of the chat route. We will get this massive scary looking error. This is what login required decorator does. It prevents people from accessing a protected page without logging in. Let's go back to the chat page and I'll show you another way to enforce login. I'm going to remove the login required decorator. So rather than use the decorator, let's use the is authenticated property on the current user. If the user is not logged in, it will show the user a polite message. Please log in before accessing chat. Okay, before we test this, let's modify the login route. Well, we did this to demonstrate the concept, but there really is no reason to log in a user and then immediately check whether the user is in fact logged in. So we can get rid of this conditional statement and redirect the user to the chat route. And we can get rid of this.
Okay, let's test this again. I'm going to go to the login page, enter the same credentials, user seven, and the password is test. So we are being redirected to the protected chat page. So far, so good. Now let's log out the user by visiting the logout page. Now let's try to visit the chat page again. As you can see, instead of an unauthorized notification, we are able to show a customer an alternative message. So that's it for Flask login. You have seen at least how some of the basic structure of this extension works. Before we end, let's commit the changes we have done. Going to stop the server. Get status. So there are two files we modified. Let's add and commit these two changes. Add login authentication functionality. In the next video, we will implement a message flashing on our app. This will help us send helpful notification to our users. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.